I'm transforming this mullet bike into a good old fashioned 27.5 bike. It seems like the bike industry is done with 27.5 bikes. They're making every model in their fleet a 29er or a mullet bike. So why am I doing the opposite? I totally get that mullet bikes and 29ers are better at handling rough terrain, but there's always a trade off. Bigger wheels plow through terrain, but can't be reasoned with when you need them to be nimble and precise. Trying to be nimble with big wheels is like trying to dance in boots. If you've been following along with the mountain bike market for the past few years, you've probably noticed a significant shift in the industry. Santa Cruz bikes, amongst others, have been transitioning their entire fleet of 27.5 bikes into mullet bikes. And as change usually does, it's stirring up a lot of emotions. I for one am not stoked and I know I'm not alone. If you know me, you know I've talked about this before, so why am I bringing this up again? Well, I'm on a mission to build the ultimate quiver killer. I want to build my mullet Santa Cruz Chameleon 8 into a bike that is comfortable and capable enough to ride long distances, but sturdy and nimble enough for jumps and jibs. One that can take me anywhere I want to go and ride anything I want to ride. A super fun, directionless, and endlessly capable bike that the kid in me would love to ride. And if I want this Santa Cruz Chameleon 8 to be that bike, I'm going to have to reverse engineer it into a 27.5 bike. If you want to see how I'm going to do this, stick around. I'm also going to do some other upgrades in this video to make this bike closer to my dream of building the ultimate do-it-all bike. If you saw my first video about this bike, you'll know that I upgraded the stock budget fork to a Lyric Ultimate. But the Lyric Ultimate was a 29 inch fork, so I think you know why it has to go. So sadly, the shiny red Lyric is no more. I replaced it with a not quite as shiny, but equally competent Pike Select. The Lyric was 130 millimeters of travel with a 42 millimeter offset and was built to house 29 inch wheels. Since I'm going to a smaller front wheel, I'm gonna need to bump the fork travel up so that it balances out the geometry. So the used pike that I bought is 140 millimeters of travel with a 46 millimeter offset and is obviously built to house 27.5 wheels. I'm hoping that increasing the fork travel by 10 millimeters will be enough to balance out the geometry. I typed the geometry numbers into a bike geometry calculator and it looks like this change will slightly steepen the head tube and seat tube angles by half a degree and increase the reach by five millimeters. That should be fine. Not really a huge fan of this giant knob on the top, so in the future, if we really like this setup, I'm definitely cutting this down. The next thing I did was buy just one rear tire for the bike. I've had my eye on these Continental Cross Kings for a really long time and figured they would be the perfect tire for this build. As the name implies, they're sort of a fast rolling cross country tire that I think really fits the profile for this build. I went with 27.5 by 2.3 and I feel like they're the perfect size. Fast rolling enough for scales parks, pump tracks, and adventure rides, but also grippy enough and have enough volume that they'll be perfect for some light mountain biking. While the rear wheel was out of the bike, I decided to shorten up the chain stays. The Chameleon has adjustable dropouts, so I shortened them as much as possible. Shorter chain stays will make the bike snappier and poppier, kind of like a dirt jump bike or a BMX bike. The rear end of the bike was coming along nicely, but I still didn't have a front wheel or front tire for the build. About a week later, I ended up finding a really good deal on a Santa Cruz reserve wheel on Facebook Marketplace. So I drove an hour down to Towson to pick it up. Being a big Santa Cruz guy, I was really excited to own a reserve wheel, even if it was just one. Around the same time, I ordered another 27.5 by 2.3 Cross King for the front of the bike. It's absolutely crazy to me that these tires only cost $45. They seem super legit, and I'm definitely planning on doing a review on these tires in a few months after I've kind of ridden them a good bit. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video.
I've taken the bike out for a few rides since the upgrades. So here are my thoughts on the new components and also the new geometry of the bike since making it 27.5. The fork is absolutely great. It feels a lot more supple than the Lyric did, and I think that could be because it has less miles on it. It's hard to tell how many miles are on these used forks sometimes, but I feel like I'm really happy with how the Pike Select feels. It's also a bit lighter too, which is great. I feel like the Lyric probably was a little bit overkill for this build. The last thing I have to mention is that I think the Pike looks way better than the Lyric did. Um, the red and blue was cool and very patriotic, just wasn't my cup of tea. The reserve wheel is great. It's an aluminum wheel, just like the 29 inch wheel that I took off of the bike. It's circular, it rides, it's true. That's really all I gotta say, five stars. Coming from a 2.4 Maxxis DHF in the front and a 2.5 Maxxis Aggressor in the rear, I instantly noticed how much faster rolling these tires were. Also, I've never ridden a tire that just feels so cushy. The compound is so much more supple than I'm used to and I really like the feeling. I'm gonna have to ride them a little bit more to test the durability, but so far I really like the tread pattern and the ride feel. There's no drift between the center knobs and the side knobs, so they feel really stable and predictable on corners. I also feel like the volume is spot on. Now when it comes to the bike's new geometry, I have a few concerns. It feels and looks a bit steeper, which in layman's terms means the bike is leaning a bit forward. More importantly, when I test rode the bike, I felt like the bike was a little harder to pop up for bunny hops and manuals, but then once it reached a certain height, it became really easy to pull up. And I think that has to do with the fact that the front end of the bike is a little bit lower, so it's harder to get that first initial pull, but then once it reaches a certain point, it kind of wants to fly up because of the shorter chain stays. It's really not as noticeable as I'm making it seem, and it definitely doesn't mean that the bike rides like poop. I still like it so much more than I did with the 29er front end. But I do have some ideas of how I can remedy this problem. Option A would be to swap the 140 air spring to a 150 air spring, effectively making the fork a little bit longer and bringing the front end of the bike up. This is pretty cheap to do, but it's a good bit of work and a little bit messy. Option B would be to get some high rise handlebars, which I'm thinking about doing anyway. So I feel like regardless, I'm just gonna do that. I'm probably gonna go with like a 50 millimeter rise or something in that ballpark. Option C is to do both. Let me know if I should do option A, B, or C, or drop an option D down in the comments. At the end of the day, I'm super stoked with how the bike turned out. I feel like it rides really good, looks really good, and is definitely one step closer to becoming my version of the ultimate quiver killer. Click here to watch the next video about this bike, and if it doesn't exist yet, just watch this video.